All right, so in four six, we talked about angle, angle, side, and angle, side, angle, the last two shortcuts to proving that triangles are congruent, which means we now have five, side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, 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 side, and hypotenuse leg. So one and two are just simple yes or no answers. And if they're not, you write no congruent. If they're yes, then you give which one. So if you look at number one, are those two triangles congruent? Yes. What's your reasoning? Angle, side, angle. So what's there that's not labeled? That if this was a proof, you'd have to label. The reflexive side. Again, train yourself to look for the easy stuff like reflexive side, vertical angles, all that stuff. Okay, two. Are these congruent? If you were to mark that reflexive side, because that's the only thing that's there that's not already marked, right? So that remember, we can't use that acronym, right? An angle, the non-included angle, and then two sides makes a bad word. Can't use it, okay? It's not because it makes a bad word. They can't use it. It doesn't work, but it also makes a bad word. All right, so number three says write a two-column proof given that BD, so say BD bisects angle ABC, and angle A is congruent to angle C, and you want to prove that the two triangles are congruent. So state the obvious, which would be what? The reflexive side, BD equals BD. Then what? Okay, angle, so BD bisects ABC, which is this big angle up here, cutting it into two congruent parts. Okay, so I could say that angle ABD is congruent to angle CBD, and that reason is? Definition of a bisector. Do I have enough information to prove these are congruent? Yes. So triangle ABD is congruent to triangle CBE, CBD, sorry. And the reason is? Angle, angle, side. How many of you got it right? If you're not raising your hands, yeah, you got some work to do, okay? That is not a hard one. No, two and three could have been switched. The order does not matter. You don't need one to get to the other one. Okay, Leah. Can you guys? I put um, angle AB is congruent to BC because the definition of a bisector. So the, 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 it's an angle bisector. It only bisects the angle, not the sides. There is such a thing as a segment bisector, but this one's giving you an angle bisector. Okay, and then in 4.7, we did extra practice to the proofs and added on CPCT that says that if the two triangles are congruent, then all of their pairs of corresponding parts are congruent. So number one says tell which triangle you can show are congruent in order to prove that AE equals DE and what postulate or theorem would you use. So if you were to look at this, I'm going to zoom in on this one, your goal is to prove that this segment here equals this segment here. Okay, what information is there that you can use? The vertical angles, good. So vertical angles are congruent. You didn't have to state all this, but vertical angles are congruent. So then what two triangles can I prove are congruent from there? Nick. Good. A, C, E. And wait, A, C, E would have to go D, B, E. Okay, what's the reason? So what, which acronym does that, this fulfill? No, that's, that A, E, and D, E. How do I get them that they're congruent? We didn't have, let's erase this one, because we didn't, sorry, we didn't have that one yet. Good. You've got two angles. You've got the vertical angles, and then the angles that they originally gave you, and then the side that they originally gave you. So it would have been, whoa. It would have been angle, angle, side. And then you can say that the corresponding parts are congruent, and the reason would have been CPCT. Yep. Could you have done it another way? How? Um, well, I A, B, C, and D, E. Oh, number two says prove that the measure of angle one equals the measure of angle two. So I'm trying to get that these two are congruent, OK? So if you could look at this as though they are two separate triangles, and this being one, and this being the other, okay, if I prove those triangles are congruent, then part of those triangles, which is this angle and this angle, are vertical angles to so the ones I'm trying to prove are congruent, right? So if I can prove that those ones I just marked are congruent, then can I get that one equals two? Yeah. yeah. So how do I prove that triangles are congruent? 
The only thing I'm given are the right angles, right? So I get angle O, L, M. I can either say equals 90 degrees and angle N, M, L equals 90 degrees, or I could have said they're perpendicular. Either way, because they're given to you that way. Um, and L, O equals M, N. This was all given. So if you state that they both equal 90, then you can say that they equal each other, right? OLM is equal to NML, and that's substitution. Okay, and then I've got the one side already marked as congruent, but I need something else. What else is there that I can use? What's being but shared by both triangles? LM, right? Do we see that? LM is being shared by both triangles. So if LM equals LM, that's called what? Reflexive. Now do I have enough information to prove that those two triangles are congruent? I've got two sides, right? Two bare sides and the included angle, which means side angle side. So triangle MLO is congruent to triangle L M N. Those two are congruent. Then their corresponding parts are congruent, which would be M, L, N. Angle L, L, N is congruent to angle L, M, N. And that's CPCT. And then I have to state that M, L, N equals angle 1 and L, M, N equals angle two. That's vertical angles theorem. Um, L, M, N, and M, L, O. M, L, O, this one's O. So this one's O. Thank you. So then if those two are congruent, I've already stated they're congruent, then I can substitute in the congruent angles in their place. So that one took a little bit of extra work, but the concept is the same. If I'm trying to prove corresponding parts are congruent, I've got to prove the triangles are congruent, and then I can state the corresponding parts are congruent for CP, and I forgot the last C. CPCTC. Yeah, and then it went a step further to show that the exterior angles were also congruent. So there's two major concepts from 4A that you need to know, and they're both based on isosceles triangles, okay? So what do we know about an isosceles triangle? Sides. Two sides are equal. So we need to know the vocab from this. We need to know what these things are called. So the two congruent sides are called legs. The non-congruent side is a base. The angle where the two congruent sides meet is called the vertex angle. And then the two angles across from those congruent sides, God bless you, are called the base angles. So legs are the congruent sides. Where they meet is called the vertex angle. The non-congruent side is called the base. And where the non-congruent side hits the legs called the base angles. So vocabulary terminology that you need to know in order to understand what's coming up. So, and yay, it has a name, so we get to shorten it. It's called the base angles theorem, okay? The base angles theorem says if two sides of a triangle are congruent, then the angles opposite them are also congruent. They're not the same measure because one has length and one has degrees, okay? But they are congruent to each other. So if I've got an isosceles triangle, then the base angles are congruent, and it's called the base angles theorem. In this diagram, if AB is congruent to AC, then angle B, which is opposite AC, is congruent to angle C, which is opposite <coughs> AB. God bless you. Okay, the next theorem is called the converse of the base angles theorem. So remember converse, we switch the if and then. This time it says if the two angles of a triangle are congruent, then the sides opposite those angles are congruent. 
So now we're saying if the angles are congruent, then the side opposite them would also be congruent. And then if those two sides are congruent, what kind of triangle is this? Isosceles. So if, if you have two angles in a triangle that are congruent, your triangle can eventually be proven to be an isosceles triangle. And the reason there would be a, the definition of isosceles. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then state that. So, yeah. So, if it gave you this thing and it said prove that this triangle was isosceles, the given would be the two angles are congruent. The next step would be the two sides are congruent, and that's the converse of the base angle theorem. The next step is the triangle's isosceles, definition of isosceles. Could you also say that? Okay. Like, remember, corollaries are things that are easily determined from a theorem. So, this is exactly what you were just saying. Corollary to the base angle theorem says if a triangle is equilateral, it's equiangular. And the corollary to the converse says if a triangle is equiangular, then it's equilateral. So if all three sides are congruent, then all three angles are congruent. And if all three angles are congruent, then all three sides are congruent. But I thought you said that if like, all three angles were congruent in the sides, they didn't have to be. That's in two triangles. So within one triangle, if they're all congruent, then the sides are congruent. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so now we're going to apply all that stuff. So if you look at A, you've got two congruent sides. So if those two are congruent, what's true? The base angles will be congruent, which means that this is X and so is this. So I could set up a little equation. I could say X plus X plus 30 equals what? 180. Or I could subtract 30 from 180. And divide by 2. It's the same thing, right? So if I take away 30 from 180, I get what? 150. And then divide it by 2. X is 75. Okay, B. This is the converse. It's saying that the angles are congruent. So if the angles are congruent, then what's true? The sides are congruent. Which two sides are congruent? Because they give you all three. Good. So be careful because this is the biggest mistake people make is they add them all up and set them equal to 180. What's wrong with that? They're sides. You know nothing about the sum of the sides unless it gives you perimeter, right? Mm -hmm. It would be angles that sum to 180. So here I would say that 2x minus 4 equals x plus 5. x would equal 9. And then C... Does it look isosceles yet? Yeah. <coughs> no, not yet, but what am I missing? That third angle, 56 plus 62 is 118. Subtract that from 180, and I get 62. Now do I know that it's isosceles? Yeah, yeah. if these two are congruent, then the sides opposite them are congruent. This example says to place the statements in the appropriate order for a proof and then provide the reasons. So you want to start at the beginning and work your way through how you would normally be doing a proof. So we normally start the proof with the given, which would be that angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, which in that list is step D. So I would say angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, which is given. So 1 is congruent to 2. Your goal is to prove that OK is congruent to OJ. So you want to prove that these two sides are congruent. So if 1 is congruent to 2, then I want to look through my steps and see what can I say next. Well, 3 is congruent to 4, I don't know yet. If the triangle was um, an isosceles triangle, then I could state that, but I don't have that yet. 2 is equal to 4 and 3 is equal to 1. Well, 2 is equal to 1. To, 4 and 3 is equal to 1. And the reason is the vertical angles theorem. This is 1, this is 2. Okay, if that's true, then I can state that 3 equals 4, because if 1 equals 2 and 2 equals 4, then 1 equals 4, and if 1 equals 4 and 3 equals 1, 
then angle 3 is congruent to angle 4. And that's substitution. So in two steps, it would be transitive, but in one step like that, it's substitution. So what we just said is that if 4 equals 2, 2 equals 1, and 1 equals 3, then 4 equals 3. So again, substitution. Now, if 4 equals 3, then the two sides are equal to each other. So OK is congruent to OJ, and that's the converse of the base angle theorem. So the base angles theorem converse, which says that if the two angles are congruent, then the sides opposite them are congruent. Okay, example three, now it's your proof. Given that M is the midpoint of AB, the measure of angle one equals, and that should say measure of angle two, prove AC is congruent to MB. So if M is the midpoint of AB, they are given M is midpoint AB, and the measure of angle 1 equals the measure of angle 2. So these two are congruent. Prove that AC is congruent to MB. So this is given. Okay, if it's the midpoint then these two are congruent. So MB is equal to AM. Step two, definition of a midpoint. And then if these two angles are congruent, then the angles, the sides opposite them are congruent. So... AC is congruent to AM, and that's the converse of the base angle theorem. And if MB equals AM and AM equals AC, then AC equals MB, and that's transitive. Okay, so this is the homework uh, questions. This one was write a proof given that triangle ABF is congruent to D. So ABF is congruent to DFB. And B is the midpoint of AC. And you're trying to prove that triangle FDE is congruent to B, C, D, and A, B, F. So start with your given triangle A, B, F is congruent to triangle D, F, B. F is the midpoint of A, E, and B is the midpoint of A, C. So this is the midpoint here. Okay, so this is all about sides. We've got all the sides laid out. We can tell from this is given. We can tell from the fact that they're the midpoint that AB equals BC and AF equals FE. And that's the definition of the midpoint. And then because the triangles are congruent, we can say all the pairs of corresponding sides are congruent. So AB equals DF, BF equals FB, which should make sense because that's also reflexive, and AF equals DB, and that's CPCT. C. So I'm going to redraw it just so I could draw on top of it. A, B, C, D, E, F. Okay, so we said that AB is congruent to DF. Uh, we said that ABF is congruent to BF. And we said that AF is congruent to BD. Okay, then we said that 
change color again. AB is congruent to BC. So that would get one tick mark if I was going to mark it. And we said that AF is congruent to FE. So AF is congruent to FE. This would get three tick marks if that's congruent. So what we just marked would be our sides that are congruent. So I could say that um, AF equals BD equals FE. All three of those are the same. And that's because if this equals this and this equals this, then that, that's transitive. And the same thing for those yellow tick marks. So if AB equals BC and BC equals FD, then... No, if AB, sorry, if AB equals DF and AB equals BC, then BC equals A, B, and F, D. And again, that's transitive because we joined the two statements together. So now we've got to figure out, there's no information about this third side on either of these triangles, which means I'm going to have to look at the angles. So the other thing that's true about congruent triangles is that their angles would be congruent. So according to this, and if I actually, let me zoom in on this a little bit. I zoomed in on it a little bit just so that we can kind of get clarification. So let's say I call this angle 1, 2, 3, and then I'm also going to use these 4, 5, 6, 7, just so that we can kind of get a visual on it. I know from my congruency statements that angle A, B, F, which is 3, is going to be congruent to angle D, F, B, which is 5. And I know that angle AFB is congruent to DB, DBF, which is here. So angle 1 is congruent to angle 7. And I know that because CPCT. So now if that's the case, I have to use the whole angle here and this whole angle here. So I can say that Angle 1 plus angle 5 plus angle 4 equals 180. And I can say that angle 3 plus angle 7 plus angle 6 equals 180. And that's the definition of a strained angle. If it was just two of them, I can use linear pair postulate, but there's more than just two. So it's the definition of a straight angle. So now that means that these two are equal to each other. 1 plus 5 plus 4 equals 3 plus 7 plus 6 which is substitution. And then if I know that 3 equals 5, then I can take away 3 and 5. And I know 1 equals 7. I can take away 1 and 7. And I've got angle 4 equals angle 6, which is subtraction. So now I know 1, no, sorry, 4 equals 6. So I've got that these two triangles are already congruent. I've got that triangle EFD is congruent to triangle DBC uh, and that's side angle side. And then I'm out of space and I don't want to focus on this too much because you won't have something this hard on your test. But the last thing I have to do is add together the, tri the angles of angle of triangle A, B, F. So I could say that angle 1 plus angle 2 plus angle 3 equals 180. And then I can say 1 plus 2 plus 3 equals any of these two. And then I can subtract away the congruent ones again. And I end up with angle 2 is also equal to angle 4 or angle 6, depending on which triangle you use. And then I've got ang side, angle, side. So this, obviously, is a much harder proof. It's a challenge proof for a reason. Uh, you don't have to worry about something like this being on your test, but it's definitely good practice. These are more like what would be um, on a test. 
So this one says to prove that side AC is congruent to side GE. So if I state the given here, it's that AD equals DG equals DF equals BD. So those are all given. So I'm trying to get the AC equals GE. So I could try to prove that these two triangles are congruent and then use CPCTC to say that. Uh, I have vertical angles. I've got one pair of congruent sides, but I'm missing the other pair of congruent sides. So you got to think a little bit further and say, okay, what triangles are congruent? Well, these two triangles are congruent. And I know that because they have the congruent pairs, but they also have the vertical angles. So now I know those triangles are congruent. Triangle ADF is congruent to triangle BDG and that side angle side. So if that's the case, then angle A is congruent to angle F and congruent to B and congruent to G. So I can say angle A is congruent to angle G. Actually, it would be a, a D, A, C, and D, G, E, and the reason is C, P, C, T, C. And then now I've got two triangles this way. So if I prove that these angles are congruent, which they are because of vertical angles theorem, Now my triangles, the smaller triangles, are also congruent. From angle side angle. And then the corresponding sides are congruent. And that's C, P, C, T, C. Okay, this is on the quiz portion of the assignment. So number four says, given that BC, BAC, which is this angle here, is congruent to DCA, and AB is congruent to CD. So again, state your given. So let's pull this down. Let's say this is given. And then state the obvious. So on this one, I've got a shared side. AC is equal to AC. And that's reflexive. So right there, I've got enough to prove these triangles are congruent. And it's side, angle, side. Okay, five should have been in the answer, so let's talk about six. And it says write a plan for proof of work and actually work it all the way out. So PQ is marked as congruent to MN. Angle P is equal to 90 degrees, and angle M is equal to 90 degrees. So that would be our given. Again, state the obvious. So this time we've got vertical angles. Angle PLQ is equal to angle MLN. And that's the vertical angle theorem. Okay. If it was a right angle and a leg in the hypotenuse, then I would use HL, and I wouldn't have to state that the right angles are congruent, but it looks like I've got angle, angle side, and in order to do that, we've got to state that the two right angles are congruent. So P is congruent to M, and that's substitution, because if they both equal 90, they equal each other. But we do have to state that they're equal before we can prove the triangles are congruent. So QPL... Triangle N L no N M L and that's angle angle side and then if the two triangles are congruent then their corresponding parts are congruent which would say Q L equals N L and that's B B C T C and that's it for the even ones from the homework.